Nothing to see here, just a married Christian woman living the most biblical life you could imagine. You're right. Hi, Ugly. It's me, Pussy, and welcome back to Hot or Rat. And today, we'll be reviewing episode 9 of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars Season 7. Today, our queens were challenged to go viral by creating their very own TikTok, I mean, social media dance challenge videos. And the runway category was What Lies Beneath. <laughs> <laughs> AKA many, many, many reveals. And honestly, the judging this episode left me scratching my wig wondering what were the judges thinking? So we'll be breaking all that down and then at the end of today's video, catching up with the drag world's hottest topic, Violet Chachki, who's finally broken her silence on the whole fashion photo review situation. We've got a lot to cover today, but first, Crikey! Everyone's been asking me, Bussy, where are you watching all these seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race? On streaming platforms I already pay for with the help of award-winning VPN and today's video sponsor, Surfshark. For example, on certain platforms, All Star 7 is inaccessible to people in the US, but with Surfshark, just one click can take me anywhere in the world, like let's say, Argentina, where every season of every franchise is available to stream. And in addition to unblocking geo-restricted content, I also love using Surfshark to help block ads and trackers, and to help protect protect my internet traffic from prying eyes like snoopers on public Wi-Fi or my ISP here in my very own home. They're watching. Because best of all, Surfshark's got your back wherever you are with unlimited device login. Plus, there's no risk in just trying it out because Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. And Surfshark's partnered with me to bring my viewers an extra hot deal. When you click the link in the description of my video and use code BUSSY, you'll get 83% off and three extra months of Surfshark for free. Click the link. Thanks, Surfshark, for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get this rump a bumpin'. First up, Shea Coulee. On the runway today, she's giving us a little I'm blue, da ba dee da ba da fantasy, but make it 20s. The first look we see her in is this oversized, multi-toned blue coat slash poncho, which definitely does not say I have more looks under this one. But the gag was, it sure did. It reveals to a really pretty tulle nightgown, which finally reveals to a deep blue satin gown that has some little peekaboos in the back. One of the things I found really strange, though, <laughs> when the judges were giving their critique, critiques on these looks was Michelle said she had never seen a gown with cutouts on the back like Shay's. And I was like, we see that all the time. Like, I guess Trinity's drag, Detox's drag. And this could just be me overthinking Shay's looks, but I think she maybe was the only one to really hit that what lies beneath part of the runway category. I was very much getting that she was the beautiful jewel that the old lady dropped in the ocean. This look is hot. And the challenge Shay is trying to teach us the Shay down. Firstly, I think the look she is wearing in her shakedown video was gorgeous, but the actual content in the video, I'm a little split on. Her intro was kind of awkward and unrelatable, but the other place I think she missed the mark on here was relating the intro of her skit to the dance, and that seemed to be what the judges were really looking for, because what did the Dance Academy have to do with learning the shakedown? She honestly should have called her dance the cha-cha slide, -cha like Shay, like slide. Does that work? The Shay Shay slide? There it is. All of that said though, Shay nailed the part of this challenge that was meant to be a TikTok dance. There was constant movement throughout her body. Her moves were very clear and obvious what she was doing. And I was really interested to see how she would bring it all together as she was teaching us the steps. So while the skit half was rot for me, the dance part was like flaming hot. Next up, she now knows the secrets of the plunger. It's Jada Essence Hall. On the runway today, she is giving us the four seasons of Jada, winter, spring, summer, and fall. These four looks are phenomenal. And some, individually speaking, are better than others. For example, I think the summer and fall gowns were top tier on this runway tonight. What got me the most though, was I feel like I never knew where the next reveal was coming from. She was taking pieces down, pulling hats out of her belt line, letting dresses down, putting dresses up, like it was truly a show, what she was giving on the runway. And she is just a queen who every single week now, I cannot wait to see what she does. She's the reason for my season. This look is hot. And for the challenge, Jada is teaching us today the Divas Essential Dance Challenge. <laughs> I don't know where she got that name from. It's a bit of a mouthful. I will say though, skit wise, I think she was really strong. It was branded. She put in her running bit about look over there at the very end. And she incorporated these elements of her being super glamorous and famous, but also like quirky and weird and relatable. The dance moves though, didn't feel too much like dance moves. They kind of just felt like I'm doing this. Now I'm doing this and now I'm doing that. And when it all came together, it just felt a tad empty. I feel like the challenge for things like this, when you see them on TikTok, is you want them to catch the viewer's attention and keep it as long as possible. And as soon as those TikTok users see a pause, a still movement, swipe, you're gone. Overall though, I enjoyed what she did, so I'm gonna give her a very safe, hot 
tonight. Next up, something wicked this way comes. It's the Vivian. She's giving us a little into the woods, wicked fantasy. First, she's in her, as she says, haggard old witch cloak, which then I guess reveals to a Glenda the Good Witch type of look. And then the third part of her look is the skirt part of her dress is a tearaway, which reveals to some power joggers. I think Vivian did a really good job on the runway tonight. However, I was kind of missing the three distinct looks from her, like many of the other queens truly did have. I wanted to spend more time with that old haggard witch in the beginning and have a better story arc for that third look, which was just the tearaway piece. But I do think she looked absolutely glamazon gorgeous on the runway, at least in that second look and third, which was the same. So I'm going to give this look a <laughs> In the challenge, though, she tries to teach us a dance called the Vivio. Again, this challenge is about dancing, apparently, as much as it is about self-branding. And the branding part... <laughs> Yes, she absolutely had that down. She made sure that we knew that she could brand a dance name with her name. And Vivio it was. But my take on how she performed in this challenge was the Vivio doesn't really sound like a dance. It sounds more like the app that the dance is on. And then on top of that, she didn't even teach us a dance. She just kind of rolled around on the floor and did the YMCA. And sure, while sometimes playing the, oh, I can't do this, so I'm going to make a joke out of the entire thing character can work. But here, it just felt a little forced. And none of the dance or what she was doing had anything to even do with the name of the dance Vivio. I'm gonna give this a rat. Next up, I've got a trick up my sleeve. It's Raja. And does her first look not literally look like Eve's reveal look from the musical? First, she's giving us this crazy tropical circus tent with a pink flamingo in the hair, which reveals to psychedelic clown in the Hamptons, which finally reveals to alien goddess of the other worlds that are filled with Venus flytraps instead of people. Each layer of Raj's look was more exciting and kind of uncovered more lore about what this creature, I guess I could say, was on the runway. Ben Platt, I think, said it best when he called all of this controlled chaos. I think everything she did was effortlessly, overcomplicatedly beautiful. If this is what lies beneath, I would like to see more. This look is hot. And in the challenge, she tries to teach us the Raja. Cool. Her dance is based around the concept of her, I guess, being like a self-help guru. Each letter in her name stands for something more complicated than last and uses honestly so many words that I stopped paying attention. I could not, for the life of me, pick up on all of the advice and the dance moves at the same time. It was too much. I also think her delivery here came off a little bored and uninterested. Despite all that, I think the actual dance that she did came out pretty good. It's probably not going to go viral, but I kind of liked it in the end. So all of that considered, I'm going to give this dance a warming up. Next up, howdy y'all, it's Evie Owley. And this runway tonight was oddly, but I think my issue with it is she was kind of getting caught up on some of the different pieces and the whole thing would have translated a lot better if it were, let's say, on a theater stage where she was standing and doing these reveals. She starts off in her chrysalis, which gets torn open and there's goo everywhere, falls on the floor. And finally, after all of the drama, she is just a larva. Nothing weirder happened, no wings came out. And I was just kind of like, is that it? What was really cool about the look that I realized later during critiques was the mask she's wearing is controlled, I guess, electronically with a button. That was sick. I just don't think this concept as a whole worked for the runway tonight, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a rat. In the challenge, she is teaching us the odd bod to put the oddities in your bodities. Oddities in your lobotomies. <laughs> Evie was one of the few tonight that I think really nailed it on the skit and teaching part of it. Like, I really felt like, oh, this is a teacher that wants to help me learn this and is being campy and silly and weird and really being over the top to help me understand what's going on. Plus, the theme was great for her. And that's branding. I could definitely see this one being picked up in an app like TikTok and then remixed with extra odd things for each person happening at the end like she did with the sucker. This dance, I'm going to give a hot. Next up. Jinx Monsoon, who I am apparently cosplaying today. <laughs> On the runway, Jinx gives us a little educational moment. Her reveals are four different looks representing four different eras of art. First, she's giving us Picasso. And this piece is structured kind of like a blazer, which reveals to a Monet, which reveals to an Andy Warhol featuring some pop art of her very own face. That finally reveals to a Verklimt inspired gown. These looks more than any, I think tonight, are what I would truly consider reveals because you don't know when or where they're coming or how they're gonna happen or why. And what got me the most 
was that each of these looks not only represented the art of the artist she was honoring, but were different silhouettes. I was just as amazed at how she accomplished that as I was with Jada accomplishing like four different gowns. See, in the MoMA, these looks were hot. And in the challenge, Jinx takes an interesting approach to this social media viral dance video challenge. Her frame of reference here is, remember the cinnamon challenge? <laughs> Glozelle sure does. How is Glozelle doing, by the way? I miss her. She takes the route of trying to put as much peanut butter sandwich into her mouth as she can for her dance. Dance. And the skit slash branding part of what Jinx did tonight was phenomenal. Top tier. This is literally what Jinx does. It's where she shines. But the dancing portion could have used a little jelly, because you know jam don't shake. Apparently neither does peanut butter. It was just some swiping peanut butter on bread and shimmying side to side and her being completely ridiculous, which again was very entertaining. But is it going viral? Because it's funny, yes. Because it's a good dance though, no. Oh no. Oh my god, my earring just fell off. Jinx literally just ripped that off my ear because I said that. Jinx, I'm sorry. I realized though in my rewatch that Rue told them in the workroom it really was supposed to be a masterclass on branding. And let's be honest, how much time do you think RuPaul and Michelle spend on TikTok? Actually, Rue spends quite a bit. And uh, well, here's a clip. Don't mess with that girl, Mickey. She is not one of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Mrs. Mrs. Put that shit on. Put so can never. Period. So all things considered, yes, I am going to give Jinx a for this performance. Don't exchange the channel. Next up is Monet. On the runway tonight, she is giving us looks comprised of reveals that are all about black empowerment. Her first look is Harriet Tubman, which transitions into a Black Panther inspired look, which by the way, had to be one of my favorite looks on the runway tonight. It was just simple in its elegance and very clearly referencing the Black Panthers. And she ends in the current era with a nod to the BLM Black Lives Matter movement and on her dress is printed, and still we fight. And this was another look that Besides all these looks being a beautiful use of Monet's platform, I thought was really cool. It kind of looks like a sports jersey, but it's a sequins dress. And the best thing about these looks was they perfectly encapsulated Monet's casual yet stylish and thoughtful drag. These looks are absolutely hot. And in the challenge, she's teaching us the Monet, Monet, Monet. And thank God Rue convinced her to change from that prior concept, which is supposed to be called the exchange. Good name. But it was conflated with all these weird details about seeing an ex at a club and what you do to like, I guess get his attention or get him away from you. Anyways, the final product is worth millions. She did a really great job of tying in the concept of getting that direct deposit cash money out of the bank and incorporating that into her dance and using her name Monet as a pun for money. Plus the actual dance that she did was phenomenal. This is absolutely something that you would see on TikTok or what have you. Monet absolutely killed this challenge. This was hot. Next up, Trinity the It's Not Harry duck. I loved all the beautiful pink flowers throughout this look and how everything was beautifully constructed. This is definitely one of the most gorgeous looks we have seen from Trinity. My critique on this look is I wasn't surprised that this is where she took this category. I think it would have been more of a challenge for her to serve completely different looks instead of just slightly less versions of the prior one each time. But what she did was a flawless execution of this concept, so I'm gonna give this look a and over in the challenge, she's teaching us the tucking dance challenge. And this was another moment this episode where Trinity did what we kind of knew Trinity was going to do. If you remember, Trinity actually taught us how to tuck back on All Stars 4 in the variety show. And her name is Trinity the Tuck. So conceptually speaking, I maybe would have liked to have seen her try something different. However, she absolutely nailed what she was asked to do in this challenge. This kit was super funny, very easy to understand. And the actual dance that she turned these moves into, I think worked well and were unique enough that they might catch my attention where I'm scrolling on social media. Girl, I live. This performance was hot. Our winners tonight though, not gonna lie, caught me off guard. They give the win to Jinx and Monet. And the reason I was caught off guard was because I originally watched this episode thinking, oh, they need to make a really great dance. Something that I would see on TikTok. And Shay and Monet were the only ones that did that of this entire cast for me. But it was also very clear that each contestant heard different things for this challenge. And phrases like going viral, Viral and social media dance challenge don't necessarily mean the same thing to every person. So because the judges were evaluating everything in a skit slash branding slash dancing teaching slash personality way, I think more than anything, it did make sense that they selected these two as the top two. Even though they both, I think, won the challenge in very different ways. And concerning the winner's lip sync tonight, I did react to it over on my Patreon. That's my members only website where my patron family gets exclusive member benefits like early access to my YouTube videos, access to exclusive videos, access to the 
BuzzSeekWing Discord server and more. And you can join by clicking the link in the description of this video. See you there. But I was gagged to see that they finally did a spoken word lip sync. And this one was from Designing Women. And the thing you may not realize at first is that spoken word, in my opinion, is much more difficult than lip syncing to a song. There's no beat or cue of words and you can't really hide it if you don't know them. Which in this lip sync did become a little obvious. I think Monet was much more on the cadence of the speech from the woman in this movie. So she gets a much deserved win and ends up blocking Raja, which was interesting, but we are at a point in the competition where it looks like you are going to need three stars to get into the top four. We've got two episodes left before the finale with four potential stars to give out. And actually, now that I'm looking at this chart and the number of stars left and the number of stars that queens have, I am wondering how this is going to play out because let's say four different queens each got a star in the next two episodes. We could be looking at a weird tiebreaker situation where six queens have three stars. So that tells me that either the block is going to come into play in the next two episodes has to or there could be another twist probably in episode 11 before the finale if i were a betting woman where rupaul gives out more stars or potentially takes away stars but that's just a theory a drag theory Hey, Matt Pat. So as promised, let's go ahead and chit chat about the Violet drama. She has finally spoken out about the whole fashion photo review situation. <laughs> I'm tired. I don't have time to redo this. <laughs> Because as a reminder, the last thing we heard from her concerning all of this was a tweet where she said, yes, I booted your faves and I'll be doing it again. And then some gossip and rumor from the Roscoe's viewing party where the host said that she demanded to have those episodes taken down. Okay, so, so we had Violet here. And she said it. She was like, no. She called and she's like, pull them. That's it. Pull them. Take them down. While she was because here. Because I'm pissed. And they kind of were like, don't worry. You're doing great, yes. sweetie. They kind of like, they put a little like that. icing no. on it. And she was like, nope. We're not having these yeah. to be seen. You can hear everything that she said on the latest No Gorge episode, but I took the liberty of pulling out some highlights for everybody. She starts off discussing everything by saying that she does not need to be associated with that franchise anymore. The other thing is that I don't necessarily need to be associated with this franchise anymore, honestly. Like, after this experience, I'm like, I, you guys can f***ing keep it. I'm like, we're sitting here getting, like, threats, transphobia, like the craziest shit I've ever seen. And they were apparently both so soured on the whole situation that they offered to give the money back. I even told them, I was like, I don't care, like take it down, like delete the whole series and they wouldn't do it. They paid us X, Y, and Z money. We all was like, take the money back, like take the videos down, like I don't need this. And she also talks about how, yes, the comments on YouTube were terrible to them, but the other really big thing was this was cross platform. Remember, she went viral on Twitter and everyone was chiming in with their thoughts and concerns and questions about the situation and sometimes vitriol. The one complaint they had that I will critique a little bit though is they were talking about how the drag race fandom has a really big issue with bullying online and they absolutely do. But I will also say, I think it's actually just a fandom problem. This happens in any online community where there are enough people talking about one thing. And I'd actually argue, in my experience at least, I think there's a lot more good than bad in the drag race fandom. Plus the other poop that Violet stepped in with all of this was critiquing somebody whose spot she was basically replacing on a season where there are no negative critiques being handed out. Because even I've experienced people coming at me for having an opinion about a dress or a performance and a challenge because to some of these fans, having an opinion about their favorite queen that is not in line with like what RuPaul and Michelle said about them can feel like a personal attack, which I understand, but it doesn't mean that they need to be taking it out on anybody. Anyways, I'll end all of this with some positivity by saying, please Please be nice to each other online and especially to the queens, but I'd love to know what you're thinking about everything down in the comments below. And the moment you've all been waiting for, my hottest <sighs> The runway was super tough for me to decide on because I loved the artistry of Raja's, the unexpectedness of Jinx's, the reveal quality of Jada's, and the message of Monet's. But I've got to give it to Raja, who I was completely mesmerized by. And in the challenge, I double tapped Monet's video. I also asked my patrons to vote on their hottest hot, and today they've chosen Jinx on the runway and Jinx in the challenge. And as always, I want to say thanks so much to you for watching today's video and give an extra special thanks to today's video sponsor, Surfshark, who you can check out using the link in the description of this video. I also want to give an extra special thank you to my patrons who make my channel possible and give a little shout out to Mags, Tim Tam, Wanna, Bing Bang, Jaden Walsh, Michael Lucia, and Dorian Weston, who've all just joined my Patreon at the hot tier. And eight in the individual, Alessandro420, Alicia, Cyrus Dickey, Felicia, Frankie Fernandez, Hector, Jeffrey Steenberg, Joseph Josh, Laura Fassette, 
Louis Labrador. F. Mark James. Matthew Burns. Matthew Bauer. Miss F. Neely. Sailor. Stephen. Topher. Neely. And Will and Ton, who are all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye. Uh. Wow. Just had like three strokes.